Hi everyone, and welcome to RPG Maker MZ. If you're watching this video, then I assume it's because you're brand new to the RPG Maker engine. If so, then this video and this beginner's series will help you from zero to hero on how you can make your very own game in RPG Maker MZ. Now, the most important thing to do when loading up your RPG Maker MZ for the first time is go over to Tools, down into Options, and switch it to Dark Mode. No one uses light mode. Now to start crafting your own game, we want to move up into the left hand side where it says file. We want to say new project, then we just want to name it. RPG Maker MZ Epic Tutorials. The left hand side is going to be the name of the folder that your game's data is stored in. The right hand side is going to be the name of the game. Down here under location, you can select where you want it to save to. I've got this saved to a personal document related to RPG Maker MZ. We're just going to hit OK and load into a new program. What it's doing right now is loading in all of the different RTP assets that come with the engine and help you make your game. Once it's done, you will be greeted with this. A blank map and your character standing in the middle of the screen. Now if you go up here and press play, it's going to load up your game. You can click in and there you have it. You've got a game where characters are running around in circles. Obviously, there's a lot more to it to that, so in today's video we're going to be going over the interface of the engine. Starting in File, you've got New Project, Open Project, Close Project, and Save Project. I don't feel like I should have to tell you what those do, so I'm not going to. Another thing you can do is open from the workshop. So if you click this and you've subscribed to any items on Steam, you can actually open those directly through the Steam workshop. You can also upload to the workshop. So what you can do is you can load in an image for your game, you can see is it a game or a resource, what genre is it, fantasy, all that sort of stuff, flavor. And then you can make a description for it. Make sure you read the terms of service before you upload anything to the workshop. Right below this you have deployment. If you click on this, this gives you the screen which allows you to deploy your game, which essentially packages it up and you can hand that out so people can load it up and play it. So you can package it out for Windows, Mac OS or web browsers. One thing to note, if you do want to export your game for iOS and Android, what you do is you export it as a web browser and you'll need to package that later on as an APK file, but we'll get to that in a different video. One thing you can do is exclude unused files, but keep in mind in RPG Maker MV, sometimes if you clicked exclude unused files, this wouldn't recognize any files that were being used by plugins and it deleted essential files. On the right hand side we've got encryption, so you can encrypt your image files and your audio files so people can't steal it when they download your game. And you can also come up with an encryption key right here so that some people you do want to be able to de-encrypt it can. If you're using resources that you've created yourself and you're worried about piracy, then I do suggest encrypting your game files. An output location, once it's all packaged, this is going to be the location that it sends your game to. Underneath that we have Exit RPG Maker MZ. Again, I'm not going to explain that one. Over in Edit you've got your standard Undo, Cut, Copy, Paste, Delete, Find. You don't need a tutorial for that. In mode, you've got two different modes. You've got your mapping mode, which is where you can manipulate the level where your character's standing on by using different mapping tiles. And in the other mode, you've got your event, which is where you can move your character around, create some NPCs, and maybe even create some treasure chests. The best way to swap between these two modes are these two buttons right here. The left one is the mapping mode. This allows you to edit the level. The right one is the event mode, which allows you to dictate what's happening on the screen. On the mapping mode, you'll find a tile set on the left hand side here where you can choose different tiles. Down here you'll find your A tiles, your B tiles and your C tiles. These are just different lists of tiles that allow you to do different things. We'll get more into that in the next video when we go into mapping and level design. Over in the event tab, you've got your different event finder. So you've got one event, which is this man over here. We can rename him to man. And then this one over here, which is a treasure chest. So you'll notice if I click an event over here, on screen, it's also going to select the two different events. Clicking back over into the mapping tab, you have your draw drop down menu, which allows you to choose the type of brush you want to draw your level with. Pencil is simply like that. Rectangle allows you to click and drag. Ellipse allows you to make a circle by clicking and dragging. 
and flood fill just fills the screen with whatever tile you've selected. Shadow pen allows you to draw shadows on your map. So if your character's standing behind a building and you want a shadow there, you can draw that shadow. Now again, the easier way to use these functions instead of using these drop down menus is up on the taskbar we have pencil, which allows us to draw with the pencil. The rectangle, which allows us to click and hold a rectangle. The ellipse, which does the ellipse. And then the flood fill as well as the shadow draw. Under scale we've got zoom in and zoom out and then actual size. So if we want to zoom in we can zoom in like that. If we want to go back to the actual size that's how it's going to appear. The easiest way to do that again in the helpful taskbar is by clicking that or clicking that. An even easier way is to hold control and zoom in or hold control and zoom out using your mouse wheel. Now under the tools drop down menu we have the database manager which houses all of your actors, your classes, skills, items, weapons, anything to do with the system in terms of how your game works will be in the database manager. You can enter that by clicking this button here which is the cog. Instead of using the drop down menu you can enter the database manager by clicking on this key right here. The next one down is the plugin manager, which manages all of the different plugins. What plugins are is code that isn't exactly written by the creators of RPG Maker, but also written by the community, and they create code to help you alter your game, and you can plug that code into the engine to do what you want. Again, instead of using the drop down, you can click this puzzle button right here, and that is the plugin list. Now to speed through these, you've got your sound test, event searcher, resource manager, character generator and options. Now down in options none of this is really too necessary for you to be messing around with at the start except changing that to dark theme. As for the other things in the tools menu they're also hot bars up here so for the sound manager this is where all of your sounds, your music, your sound effects, all of that is going to be stored so you can click into here to listen to your different music and sound effects. Moving over to the next one, the event searcher is a brand new feature in RPG Maker MZ and here you can search for the different events throughout your game judged on different things, whether they have a variable set to a different number, a switch is on or off, we'll get into those later, or by the event name. So if I wanted to search for that treasure chest, I would just simply type the name treasure chest and there it tells me that on map 1 the event number 2 is treasure chest at position tile 10 by 5. This is really helpful if you've got a game full of a large amount of copycat events that you need to change. But if you have a lot of copycat events, it's better to use common events, which we'll get into in another video. Right next to that is your resource manager. This is where all of your images are stored, all of your sound is stored, all of your sprites, all of your tiles, your pictures. And this is also where you can import different images. So if you had a custom designed character, you could go to faces and import the face of your custom character. Moving over one more, you have the character generator, which allows you to generate your own character by changing their hair color, their eye shape, whether they've got ears, changing different clothing that's available to them. Using this, you can generate your very own unique characters for your RPG Maker MZ game. Moving over to the last button on this taskbar here, that is the playtest button. So in the game's current state, we can click playtest. It'll save any changes we've made. And it will allow us to playtest the game we've created. Up under the game drop-down menu, you can click that playtest or control R. You can open the source folder. This is the folder where everything is stored within your game and it'll open a separate file explorer window of the source folder. You can also update the core script of your RPG Maker MZ. So when there's an update, you can go from version 1.00 to 1.01. .01. Over in the help section, you have contents, which is pretty useless. You don't need to worry about that. You've got the RPG Maker web page. So if you click on that, that will load up the RPG Maker official web page. Hey, look at that. You can save up to 15% on RPG Maker MZ bundles. I wish I was sponsored right now. You've also got built-in tutorials, which makes my complete YouTube series redundant. But if you click on this one right here, you can get 
map basics, event basics, creating shops, floors that damage you, healing and saving, etc. And if you click on one of these, what it's going to do is it's just going to say, this is a tutorial, next. It's going to say, let's start a new project. Then it's going to tell you where to click. Essentially everything I've just told you in this video. And if you want to stop the tutorial, you simply go back to the help section and go stop tutorial. And finally, the most important thing, the about section, RPG Maker version 1.0.1 1 .1 is copyright 2020 by Kotakawa Corporation, Yoji Ojima. These are the basics of the RPG Maker engine. But just knowing the interface isn't going to help you make your masterpiece of your game idea come true. So join me in the next tutorial where we go about making a basic level.